Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for virtually joining us at IRD for today's webinar on the use of artificial intelligence in traffic data collection. This webinar is designed to be short, hopefully informative, and exciting because we have a new product to introduce to everyone. But before we get into the webinar, there are a few things that I want to cover about the format. During the webinar, there will be a series of poll questions that pop up. Please take the opportunity to select a response to these questions. They'll only appear for a short time, so you'll have to be quick about it. Also, there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your page. If you have any issues during the webinar, type your issue as a question into the Q&A box. And then if you have any technical questions about the content of the webinar, type it in here as well and we'll respond. The webinar will be recorded so that it's accessible afterwards and will be made available to everyone that registered through the online registration link. Our presenters today are Francois Blouin. Francois is the Chief Technology Officer at International Road Dynamics. Martin Plemmel, that's me. I'm the product manager for our new AI product. Breton Hurd. Breton is a systems engineer and he's the technical lead for this new product. And Peter Sierkos. Peter is a product sales specialist on our sales team. In today's webinar, we're gonna take you through an overview of Industry 4.0. We will then share a few insights about Industry 4.0 artificial intelligence, and its uses in the ITS industry. We will provide an introduction to international road dynamics, and then share with you about IRD's new solution in depth. Lastly, we'll be around to answer any questions that you have. With introductions out of the way, I'd like to welcome product sales specialist Peter Sierkos to talk a little bit about Industry 4.0. Thank you, Martin. Before talking about AI, we felt it would be a good opportunity to quickly share with you the timeline of the Industrial Revolution and how we made it to Industry 4.0. In 1784, we started out with steam engines, spinning jennies, water frames, and power looms, which were all great inventions during that time. In 1870, our industry evolved to Industry 2.0, where mass production and assembly line were introduced, with part thanks to Henry Ford. In 1969, Industry 3.0 became a bridge between Henry Ford's transition towards greater productivity, intelligent processes, and automation. This was achieved through the use of computers and electronics. Today, we're here at Industry 4.0, where the majority of our IoT devices, in some way or another, communicate with each other and through the internet. An IoT device could be anything from a mobile phone to a watch to now even a vehicle. There's much more to Industry 4.0 than just IoT devices. Industry 4.0 involves the ways in which we automate technology to perform certain functions. An example of this is a barrier gate and an inductive ground loop sensor at a toll station that can be combined together to automate a function. Today, in the ITS industry, we connect devices to different networks. An example of this is connecting a camera to multiple networks and through a VPN. Today, we also manually and automatically compute data in the cloud. A great example of this is IRD's VI2M software, where it can generate automatic reports on way in motion and traffic sensor data. In Industry 4.0, devices are now connected more than ever before. Where a way station operator used to have to physically write a ticket, today, a direct enforcement WIM system can send a ticket via email without almost any human intervention. Data is now being seen in ways that were never thought possible. Who would have thought that a license plate recognition camera could be used to define how much an Uber or a Lyft fee could cost based on traffic volume? And finally, systems are becoming integrated now more than ever before, where companies are now fighting to integrate with each other and where software companies are trying to support a wide variety of different IoT devices. This today is what we call Industry 4.0. I'm excited to introduce Mr. Francois Bellouin, our Chief Technology Officer, to share with you more about AI and AI's role in the ITS industry. Artificial intelligence is not a new topic. Back in the 50s, artificial intelligence was described as any task performed by a program or a machine managing human actions. In data-heavy industries, AI provides the ability to process and analyze huge quantities of information, which humans 
would have either difficulties or would take a long time to process, especially when conducted in real time. Exponential technologies such as computing power, data storage, have been catalysts for the recent adoption of AI systems in practically every industry. More recently, mission-critical application tasks of AI in transportation, such as self-driving vehicles, are now getting lots of attention worldwide, and testings are happening as we speak. I was recently driving in a self-driving vehicle, and I was able to attend three conference calls took four pages of notes, and I felt very secured in doing that. And that's one of the application of AI in the transportation industry that is emerging. Benefits of AI in ITS are very promising. The question is, what is the good candidate applications that would benefit the most? And how would you decide? For example, when a large amount of data is available and required to make traffic flow decisions, that is a good application of AI. When you need to correlate multiple sources of data to make a decision, that's another good application. Where the system will benefit from being adaptive and learning as the system evolves over time. That's another good application. Decision making where predictions are needed, that's a perfect application as well. The benefits of AI will result in more actionable transportation intelligence and will assist in traffic management and delay predictions, for example. Artificial intelligence has multiple branches which can make it difficult to understand. We've summarized here six different branches of artificial intelligence, known as processes and techniques. IRD new AI solution focuses on using machine learning as a technique. Machine learning is generally associated with statistics and data. So contrary to traditional and conventional programming and computer algorithms, machine learning rely heavily on finding patterns and learning from a large amount of data. So it requires different approaches, different skill sets to develop. At the other end of the spectrum, more traditional approaches like expert systems and robotics are mostly based on algorithms and rules that you program. If this condition arises, take that action. Machine learning and neural networks have been trained. They've learned the, uh, with uh, lots of data that have been injected in the systems and trained prior to being deployed in the field. And in between, we have another category where you, we can include fuzzy logic and natural language processing, which involve a bit of both of programming and statistical base. For example, one example of deep learning is uh, it can allow machines to now be trained um, and learn different types of objects, different types of images, text and or sound and the system will classify and categorize or cluster this information. That would be very useful for doing classification of vehicles, for example. The critical element that is sometimes underestimated in deploying and developing artificial intelligence product is the quality of your data. And as we all know if you inject bad data, the outcome will not be necessarily very good. So it's critical that as you build products and system using machine learning and statistical based approaches, 
that you have a good understanding of the data sets that you have in order to have good predictions and precision. Today, transportation agencies rely on data now more than ever to make important decisions and solve complex problems. We understand that this involves people, processes, and technology. IRD is a technology manufacturer, systems integrator, and solutions provider, and has been a trusted partner in the ITS industry for over 40 years. Our team has evolved commercial vehicle enforcement systems, redefined traffic data collection technology, and have developed complex traffic management systems. IRD technology is also used to secure borders, ports, and infrastructure through security and access control. Our team works around the clock to ensure that all of our technology is serviced and maintained worldwide. At the same time, our solutions help customers grow and maintain roadways through toll collection while also helping protect critical infrastructure such as bridges. Over the last 40 years, IRD has continued to innovate and introduce new solutions to help solve complex transportation challenges around the globe. Today, we're excited to introduce to you IRD's newest solution in artificial intelligence, iThea. iThea is an artificial intelligence-based traffic counting and classification solution. iThea is designed for you, the customer. With iThea, you own the data, you own the equipment, and our technology has made processing automated for you. Data can be securely shared in an open and readable format. iThea is non-intrusive and it's easy to install. iThea can also be deployed as a permanent or portable solution. We're pleased to share with you a quick video of iThea in action. I'd like to pass it over to Breton, IRD's system engineer, to share with you more about iThea in detail. iThea uses machine learning. It learns from input to correctly count and identify the classification of vehicles. Once trained, the iThea software processes video input in real time through edge processing. iThea is designed to collect key information including vehicle speed, vehicle count, vehicle class, and also provides image output and video output through a self-contained edge processing platform. iThea is designed to manage various environmental and driving behavioral conditions. iThea is designed for accuracy. In recent studies conducted by the New York State Department of Transportation, testing has indicated accuracies of more than 98%. iThea is designed to analyze. I'll briefly go over the various options available with the iThea system. First, you can enter the specific site information in the Setup tab. The station ID, site, and location names are useful for identifying reports when you are collecting data from multiple iThea systems. In the Live Stream Display options, you can select to display classification pictures on the screen. The pictures identify each vehicle that is classified by the system on the screen with an overlaid number of the vehicle's class. You can also select whether the classification pictures will be shown on the top or the bottom of the screen. If desired, the total number of vehicles counted, as well as the number of each class of vehicle counted, can be shown at the bottom of the screen for informational purposes. In the processing options, you can select between the 13 class FHWA or 6 class classification schemes. If the 13 class FHWA is chosen, the system will classify vehicles according to the FHWA 13 class scheme. If 6 class is chosen, vehicles will be classified 1 to 5, 
and classes 6 to 13 will be combined together in class 6. The Save Vehicle Image option saves a thumbnail image for each vehicle classified by the system. This is useful in report verification. The report interval will determine how often the system reports will be updated with new classification and counting data. The ITHEA system is able to classify and count vehicles in single and bi-directional lane configurations. This supports up to three lanes in one direction and up to a total of four lanes in a bi-directional configuration. So why ITHEA? ITHEA is non-intrusive, making it easy to set up and easy to install. Classification is performed on the edge. ITHEA can be audited using video and image verification. It is a higher accuracy alternative to radar for six class vehicle counting and classification. It supports up to an FHWA 13 class scheme. IRD can provide custom vehicle classification schemes if needed. The ITHEA technology has been successfully evaluated by New York State Department of Transportation for several years. ITHEA is effective in all weather and lighting conditions. And finally, ITHEA's data outputs are compatible with IRD software and a variety of third-party software programs. This brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you for participating in our webinar. We will now proceed to the Q&A. That connects the presentation portion of the webinar. Uh, I would like to invite those with questions to please enter them into the Q&A section below, and the panelists will take the time to answer questions uh, as many as humanly possible. And we already have our first question here. Uh, this looks like it'd be for Breton. Uh, Breton, you guys can turn on your... Yeah, exactly, thank you. Uh, what protocol is being used in, classica uh, used in classification? Um, if I'm understanding the question correctly, um, we can do a six class um, classification or we can also do a, a FHWA 13 class classification, which abides by the FHWA um, uh, regulations for class. Uh, does the camera incorporate an IR illuminator to pick up images at night? Uh, yes, so with the permanent solution, we actually have an external illuminator um, for uh, nighttime illumination, and the portable solution has an integral illuminator in the camera. Uh, Francois, uh, is image training specific to a region, and what is the duration? So the way we uh, we built the system is uh, we need to uh, indeed train the systems with a set of recordings of uh, images and videos. So ideally, uh, we would prefer to train it per region to achieve uh, higher precision. And uh, we can then evolve the system to support multiple regions and being very precise and very accurate uh, for that particular region. The training will uh, depend on the precisions that we are targeting. So it could vary from uh, a few weeks to a few months of data acquisitions to uh, capture enough uh, data to uh, have a good data sets. Thank you, Francois. Uh, can customer specific class schemes be accommodated? Breton, I believe that's for you. Yes, as uh, Francois was stating, we, we can uh, accommodate um, uh, specific class um, classification schemes for, for customers if requested. Um, it'll uh, require some training of the system um, on, uh, on those specific classes, but it is something we can definitely accommodate. Wonderful. Uh, Maybe, is uh, there, oh, if, sorry, if, go ahead. If I may, uh, Ryan, the, uh, the advantage of the AI being adaptive is if there are specific vehicles or that are not standard, we can pro potentially train them as well and include them to detect those uh, very specific uh, equipment as, as required. So that's one of the advantage of the, the machine learning in, in, this, uh, in this product. Thank you. Great explanation. Um, Peter, uh, is there a connectivity and layout diagram for the system? Yes. Yeah, so um, if you have a specific uh, project requirement, 
<clears throat> we'd be able to help you, happily help you on a case by case uh, basis. Every location, every site might be different and an application as well. So we'd be happy to work with you on that. Okay, uh, Breton, uh, looks like how many cameras can be incorporated into one system? Uh, currently only one camera can be incorporated per ITA system. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's one camera per, per, um, per setup. Um, and uh, it's a uh, perpendicular or parallel to the road setup for the camera. Okay, uh, and does 95% accuracy pertain to volume or class? Breton? Um, actually, with, uh, with the sixth class scheme, um, uh, evaluating with, the, with um, New York State uh, Department of Transportation, they actually found that um, the classification schemes uh, were, were about 95% accurate. And volume? 98% uh, for volume, actually. 98% for volume, better. Um, can, uh, can the system be integrated with the current way in motion systems like iSync and doing away with uh, sensors such as loops? Um, not currently, but uh, that is something we're open to, um, to discussion for development, definitely. Francois, do you have anything to add to that? Can you repeat, please? Uh, can the system currently be integrated with way in motion systems uh, like the iSync and doing away with loops for triggering? So the, uh, the advantage uh, here is, uh, yes, we can uh, remove some of the loops uh, and uh, be non-intrusive as, uh, as we mentioned earlier. So that would be an, a plus in, in, if there are deployment that uh, would require uh, minimizing, uh, I guess, uh, road blocks or uh, civil engineering. So this is one approach to uh, facilitate deployment. And, uh, and, and loops could be uh, mostly uh, uh, eliminated by the, using the system. Uh, Breton, how far and how high should the system be installed from the side of the road? Um, that, that'll actually depend. We have multiple configurations that we can go um, anywhere between um, 15 to 30 feet away from the roadway. So it's uh, useful um, if you're trying to utilize an existing pole um, and, and depending on the height, uh, or sorry, depending on the distance away from the roadway, um, you'd require a different uh, mounting height for, for the particular uh, system. So. Um, for more information, you can you can contact us. We have the the figures for that. Uh, can the system count motorcycles as well? Uh, yes. Yep. The the system can count motorcycles as class one. Wonderful. Um, and for the portable system, uh, the battery is included. And in how long does the battery last? Yes, the battery is included with the portable system as well as a battery charger. Um, and uh, typically the battery lasts about 48 hours of continuous and, reading. And uh, power requirements for the non-portable? Uh, power requirements for the non-portable will be a uh, uh, 120 volt AC um, main feed for, for the system. Okay. And that looks like all the questions we have. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, we are uh, excited to announce that there will be a follow-up webinar including AI data and applications. Uh, so please watch our social media and emails for upcoming information on that. If you do have any other questions, uh, we'll give you the opportunity through a survey. We'll send everyone uh, that participated in this today. Thank you very much and have a great day.